the pseudo-subretinoid sign. This is a patient who presented with a GCS of about six and felt drowsy and lethargic. Over the subsequent four days, the GCS dropped to three and by day six, the patient was comatose. And you can see that since day one, where you can see the sulci and the sylvian fissure, the brain has become very swollen with sulcel effacement. And by day six, the brain is globally of low attenuation with increased density or apparent increased density along the tentorium and around the sinus. This is global anoxia and is causing the pseudo-subretinoid sign. A little higher up, you can see that there is effacement of the lateral ventricles and you get the impression that there is blood around the sinus. But in fact, this is due to the relative high attenuation of the fulcs and the tentorium relative to the brain, which is now of low density. One of the features of anoxic brain damage is that uh, the thalamus may uh, tend to be of normal attenuation. And higher up uh, towards the vertex, there is complete loss of sulcel definition and generalised low attenuation. Here is the CT of this patient. You can see the pseudo-subretinoid sign going around the superior sagittal sinus. There is complete effacement of the sulci, effacement of the basal systems, and effacement of the lateral ventricles. There is global loss of density in the brain parenchyma and the fox appears dense. This is the pseudo-subretinoid sign. The pseudo-subretinoid sign is thought to be due to the surrounding brain density being of a lower attenuation than normal and possibly the thrombosis of small vessels may be implicated. Here is a different patient in which you can see the pseudo-subretinoid sign mimicking the middle cerebral artery and around the basal cisterns, around the tent, and you get this increased attenuation in the fulcs and around the superior sagittal sinus. Here is another patient who has got global hypoxia. You can see that the cerebellum is um, of normal density pretty much. There's an area of reduced density here. And if you look at the thalami, they tend to be of normal density. So this is global anoxia, giving uh, spurring of the cerebellum and thalamus, but also the pseudo-subretinoid sign. True subretinoid hemorrhage, on the other hand, tends to cause more density, which is thicker around the basal cisterns, and also you get sulcal blood. This is the most important difference between true subretinoid hemorrhage and the pseudo subretinoid hemorrhage. So, in a pseudo subretinoid hemorrhage, you would not get the high attenuation in the sulci along the cerebral convexity. Further reading is given in these two articles in the American Journal of Neuroradiology.